Welcome to the North of Mouth podcast. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe because you keep us doing what we're doing. Follow us on uh, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And on this week's agenda, we've got a very interesting song by Doja Cat. Uh, Lewis wants to have a whinge about Charlie's Angels. We will be discussing Jack's favourite politician, Jeremy Corbyn. Talking about the muck strike. And we'll also be talking about... I'm a celebrity. Let's get to it. Straight off the bat today, um, with what is this shit? Um, this is not an artist that I know of, but she was trending on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Um, it's Doja Cat and her new song, Cybersex. <clears throat> right, now I've never heard or seen this person before, but they have I quite haven't. a few songs. Do they? They've, um, well, they were trending on front page on YouTube and they have 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube. No. Probably Wouldn't be because so. she always has her tits out, would it? It's good potential for that. Yeah. Yeah, um, so the song and the video were about being a webcam porn star? Yeah, I think so. I but think... The, the first thing that, that made me laugh, the moment it started, the login screen, did you see the name? No. <laughs> Wanker John 89 <laughs> It should have been 69. <laughs> Just for comedy but, but, value. But Wanker John, where yeah. is she from? Uh, I, I don't know, America probably. Because wanker is a very English word. It is. Especially when we're talking about, you know, tucking yeah. one off. Yeah, that is a very, it's a good point, that. I've not really considered that. I couldn't understand most of the words apart from the, um, I think, part of the chorus. I couldn't really understand anything of what she was reading. It was unlistenable. Like, am I I too old? Are we too old for this? (laughs) Potentially. It was painful to listen to. Not not the content, just the noise. Was I would rather listen to that terrible Poppy song that you sent me a few weeks back. Poppy is a great artist. You've just been brainwashed. I've not. Yeah. She's not paying me anything. Yeah. Um, I did click on another song that she had um, called Rules. Right. Did I send you that one? No, no, no. Um, it's about literally being a prostitute. I'm sensing a theme here. Yeah, one of the lyrics to that one is, if you spend some money, then maybe I just might fuck you. Oh, hang on. Was that the one where she's in the back of the car? You yeah, did send me that. throwing dead mice at a man. <laughs> yeah, in that one. an old like, man in a limo or something. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand this. No. Do you know what? What, what, what? She looks... It's almost... When I say Nicki Minaj and Cardi B, that seems to be... Nicki Minaj was popular. I'm like, oh, you like that, do you? Okay, let's get somebody else who looks like that, who talks shit and has got big tits and ass, and they're all fake, and we're just going to rub them in your face, and and we're going to say ridiculous shit in songs, and yeah. we're just going to barely someone who's barely got talent. Let's put that in there. You like that, don't you? We'll give you more. We'll give you more of them. And it's I said, the moment I saw this this girl, I thought, oh god, there we go again. It's another one of these. And yeah. I think, yeah, you're probably right. This and I don't boring. know, I don't know how the like Cardi B, for example. Mm. She admitted to drugging and robbing men, and nothing, nothing happened. There's video that. of her um, being a, a pole dancer. Yeah, she was a stripper for ages before she started singing. I think. But yeah, if these are the idols that you want your kids to be watching on YouTube, just yeah. let them carry on doing what they're doing. Just let them put loads of gunge in their ass as well, because yeah. everyone just loves big a massive... syringes full of oil. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what well, one thing I did find was impressive in the video was the circuit board bra and bikini that thing she had on. <laughs> that was quite impressive. Right. It was. But that was the only thing that impressed me. Yeah. Apart from that and the wanker John, which yeah, I the was wanker funny. John, which you thought were great. I just, yeah. I just thought it was a nice touch. Um, I did, don't recommend Dodger Cat. Stop watching. It's got. It's been up for a couple of days. It's had like six million views. But I don't know who's watching these videos. Well, considering. All you can see is flesh the entire Teenage time. Teenage lads, yeah. And the video literally ends panning away from her while she's on a bed rubbing some bloke's abs at a point where you think, did I just did I just see up her? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, <laughs> I think I did. It ends with that, a really sort of unsubtle pan round as she's still sort of doing this movement. I mean, like you said... Got the target market nailed down. He's <laughs> nailed down there. Is that what you're trying to say? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I was, you know, I was sold at Wanker John. Yeah, I thought it was funny, but 
uh, was majorly disappointed afterwards. I mean, I don't know what, when I say majorly disappointed, as if I was going into it going, right, this this artist seems like uh, someone I could get into. Did you not think that no. when you opened it up now? I thought no. they'd be row. Well, once I finished having a wank, then I just, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Do we rate these? I was going to say, should we start reviewing two, them? Two, we could two, have another <laughs> board along with the beers. Shall I be massively misogynistic? Yes. Why not? <laughs> two out of ten for song, f- six out of ten for tits. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah? Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Charlie's Angels. What, from what, the 90s? No, there's a new one. Oh. With two people I've never heard of, and then that girl from Twilight. The one that's like just a blank expressionless Yeah, the one that can't act. Award. Yeah. Okay. I think women are brilliant, as are men, right? I don't need to be reminded constantly that women are great and we're buffoons, yeah? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. It sort of goes against my whole, everybody is a scumbag sort of vibe. No, but when but... You, even watching the trailer, um, the very first thing, because I, I think it's almost a bit detrimental to women, the way we, they overdo the women, they almost push... Um, like the first thing in it, the first thing that she says in the trailer is, "I think women can do anything." Like, mm, right, okay. I'm, well, you couldn't deadlift five hundred kilos like Eddie Hall. <laughs> I was going to say you couldn't deadlift Eddie Hall, but <laughs> um, and it's the same with the Ghostbusters remake they did. Yeah, which was just let's do an all female cast because you know like, why? Just just make you can make Ghostbusters is a great film. The original, yeah, the new one. I've watched it. It looks yeah. terrible. But what I'm saying is, you can make you can make amazing films with women in the lead. You don't have to go. We're going to rewrite this for women because women will have it this way. It's like, oh god, it's just it kind of like makes it makes women look a bit shit because it's like they're chasing to do something, trying that, too hard. Yeah, we're trying to do something that like a thing that men have done. We'll just surpass them with something else. You you can easily women can easily surpass men on doing something else. So you know you don't have to like re, yeah. you don't have to rewrite it. And um, I'm, I'm sorry, but like the, all three of them in this film, I know, bearing in mind, I do realise that it's a film. I do realise that it's I Hollywood. Hope so. Yeah. You've got these three women in it. Right. Who are quite tiny. Yeah. Having full on fist fights with big men. <laughs> yeah, that's always been a sort of. Um... And, and, and absolutely beating the shit out of yeah, them. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Even if, if even if these were like trained killers, there's no way they'd be able to generate that amount of force. No, I think that about uh, what she called off the Avengers. Oh, the Black Widow thing, yeah. Hmm. Doing flips and and knocking people out and one, it don't work like that. And you I, just the, break the, your the fist. Stupid, the stupid thing is, and and you find it in in um, videos for, for songs. We make this thing about don't you sexualize women. We're great in our own way. Hold oh, on, by the way, on. here's my tits. Hold on. You do remember the song that yeah, we've this just, is what I mean. just spoke this is, about. This is what I mean. The, ma- the mainstream yeah. th- the idea is that you shouldn't objectify women. They are people Apart in- from Charlie's Angels was a film basically about objectifying women. Yeah, but the th- really? But, but the, point, the point I'm trying to make is that we are told, which we, none of us go around and go, yeah, yeah you, uh, come here. Like, you know, do you mean it's just... Uh. No, we're not builders. No, we're not builders. Yeah. And... We're told that, but then everything that the same women go off and do something in a film like this is just purely sexualized. Which is and use you know, lyrics like "If you spend some money, I might fuck you." There we go. And exactly. Yeah, I, but, I know where you're coming from. Um, one thing, and I, I was actually almost a bit horrified when I heard it. Right. In in the trailer, they've got this, some music on in the background, and they they push it from the very beginning that the soundtrack is ariana grande it, you know it's all women it's all women yeah. women women women. Yeah. men will not be allowed in this film they can fuck off unless they're the bad guy or they're an idiot that's right. basically it. yeah patrick stewart's in here there this video of the trailer goes along and there's music playing in the back and you can't really hear it because it's like action things and speaking and then when the mu- when the talking breaks down and you hear a lyric from the song the first lyric you hear is i don't like that boy is that what's <laughs> Why is that? Why is that in there? What's what's going on? Here? Is there some sort of agenda that's being pushed? I don't I don't really get what what we're doing here. Yeah, I know and, what you mean. There and, always does. There does always seem to be an agenda. Yeah, but why can't you just make a fit? If you're going to make like like I, that's what I'm saying. I I would love to see like something new that's got a woman in it 
that's the lead and is is, is great in it. I, I don't want to see like you know, constant rehashes and. It's the you know, sort of thing that every time Daniel Craig says he's going to retire from being James Bond, oh, maybe it'll be a woman next time. Yeah, fuck off. Yeah, the whole idea behind it is 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 a misogynistic blow. That, yeah. that is the character James Bond. Yeah, if you want to do something, create like something new that's got Jane Bond. <sighs> Make, oh, it 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 pains me because you know that always comes out every single fucking time. Every yeah, every time a film comes out and Daniel Craig goes, well, I'd rather stick pins in my eyes than film another James Bond film unless they offer me twenty million pound more. Funny that. Um, yeah, and then he soon changes his mind. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think Hollywood has run out of ideas. Hollywood ran out of ideas a long time decade ago. Decade ago. I, yeah, quite literally a decade ago because I wrote my dissertation nearly 10 <laughs> years ago. And my whole dissertation was about is Hollywood dead? And it was talking about constant sequels and prequels and remakes and everything. And I, I, it, it bothered me then. And I got to the, it was a quite a depressing one. I got a 2 1, so I don't really care. Mm. But it was a depressing kind of look into that kind of culture where it's and it ties back to what I was saying about the music it's like something was a success let's just give everyone the same thing again let's keep giving until them until they're absolutely sick, sick of, of it. it yeah and it, and it's and it, it, it's boring it's just so shit like you shouldn't remake I don't think you should remake a film do like a reboot more than one a generation because this was only done in the early 2000s yeah do you know what it's I mean it's not an old like Ghostbusters were the 80s yeah, but even, sort of even that, it. no, I don't even think that. I think that's too soon. I think, I think, um, that, like fucking Spider Man. How many have they done of them? I think I've only watched one Spider Man film. But... I watched the very first one. When I say the very first one, the one that had um, the really crap actor in it. What's his name? That could be any of them. Toby, is it Toby Maguire. Toby Maguire. Yeah, that's the one I've said. It's yeah. good that one. I... The Green Goblin. Green Goblin was the first one, wasn't it? Or was uh, it? Yeah. Green Goblin and then the bloke with the big octopus arms. Oh, I don't think I watched that one. Doctor Octopus or whatever it's called. I saw that in the cinema. What an original name for a villain. I know, it's great. <laughs> isn't it? But they did that and then I think Andy Garfield did it. He he did a reboot of it and then we've got Tom Holland has done another reboot in the Avengers and it's just like, oh, for And then there's going to be an, there's going to be another one with the Venom films. Because there's going to be another Venom we'll film. We'll that. that. We'll keep doing that. We'll keep that. I purposely don't watch the the Marvel films because I thought I'm not getting on this money making train with you. I, I don't want to. Do you know what I mean? If you if you, I liked Iron Man when it came out, and I liked Avengers. Right. I don't have to see a million film, and you've just made a million films just for the money, and it's just. Oh, by the way, but the I know only reason anybody makes a film. <sighs> If you were in this kind of thing, you'd kind of get there's there's people that do have a passion for it, and then there's fucking producers, and producers are the ones that always go, yeah, but can we make millions and millions with this? I'm like, oh, f- fuck off then. Well, hopefully this sort of thing will die down because the female Ghostbusters were a flop. Mm. They don't make any money. Funny that. Um, this Charlie's Angels, I don't think it'll be. It was. Success. It looked so shit. Like worse than. But then a lot of shit film. They get a cult following and. Yeah, but you can't honestly up. watch this. I mean, it was kind of it was a thing because obviously it's based on the 1976 TV show Charlie's Angels, and when they did the sequ- the film adaption in 2000, so yeah, 2000 they did another one, 2000, 2003. Uh, it was a bit like oh, it's a film. It's got Cameron Diaz, Drew Barrymore, Lucy. Like, they were all big names, weren't they? Yeah. This one. I'm not sure I've ever watched Charlie's Angels thinking about it. I was I haven't. Eight when it came out. I funny think. thing funny thing is though, the whole the whole point is three women doing jobs for a man, so they're still still Yeah. We we've talked about this before with the uh Fireman Sam debacle three or four episodes back. Um, it's more than that now. Is it? Mm. Yeah. Um Women can't do everything a man does. That's the be all and end all of it. No, they can. You misogynistic pig. No. <laughs> Not having it. So, now you've finished whinging about Charlie's Angels. Mm. You wanted to whinge about another one of your idols, uh, Jeremy Corbyn. Well, I'm not whinging about... I'm taking a step aside of having a go at him. Oh, you're getting off your Corbyn soapbox this For a week. second... But he is involved in this story. Okay. Now, 
on the build up to an election, we always get the the ruffling, the all. Oh, Oh, did you see what that politician did? They should be sacked for that. All they did was blow their nose in public. Yeah, yeah, disgusting that. He should be, and it, and it becomes like, it becomes so dull that all the news, all the news channels, it's just like a constant thing of, like when Ed Miliband ate a fucking sandwich. Oh yeah, I remember that. And it was like, hey, what yeah, is he doing? He, is did, he... he did look like a mental case. Yeah, but he did. He but... sandwich though. I mean, I look. He looked like he'd never ate a sandwich before. I look like a pig in a trough when I'm eating cereal. I so much imagine, so I don't, yeah. I don't he like... He does p- eat it with his hands, though. He's never never used a spoon. Mm. Never, never used a spoon. What's the point? Your hand is shaped like that. Anyway. Yeah, uh, so the story so, we're on about, for a bit of context for people... Yes. Um, ...is the picture of Jeremy Corbyn uh, dancing and fucking about on Remembrance Sunday that was in The Sun, I think it was. The Sun and the... The Sun and the Mail Online. Which it then turned out was cropped... Yes. Now, the pictures, this this is just standard shit that they've got nothing else to sort of, they have to find something politician based. And the fact if you go on to like, if you start using Remember It Sunday as a way to try and like, you know, like... Push an agenda. Yeah, it's like, f- f- just stay out of it. And there's a, the pictures of him. Now, he just looks like a right goon because he's doing all this, but they purposely cut it into three sections looking like, like he was skipping down the road. Yeah, when he was talking to a... A veteran. A war veteran. Yeah. And just gesticulating with his hands. Yeah, exactly. Um, but no, we have to say... We yeah, have to talk about making a story out of nothing. Yeah. Whereas the one that went relatively unreported was the fact that Boris Johnson put his wreath upside down on the thing. And uh, one of the news station edited the video with some of last year's footage of him putting the wreath down the right way. All right, okay. Uh, to sort of hide the fact that he'd fucked it up. But again, it's making... Making stories out of nothing. I mean, I'm not being funny. I, when I because I watched it because I always sit and watch when they when they send a tap and everything, and I, I I just sat there thinking, God, I'd hate to be one of those people because like everyone's watching you, yeah. and you've got to do it. You know that how perfectly timed it's all got to be that you you know you don't want to. And irritatingly, when you look at where they've got to place it, there's like a stand. And then there's a really irritating small step right behind it. So they have to walk <laughs> forward and place it. And then they can't naturally walk back because they will fall off this step. step. Yeah. So they're all like, oh, fuck. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't give a shit. One thing, another thing, um, Boris Johnson related and election related, because we have to find something to keep talking about and we will keep badgering you until fucking 12th of December. This will be good for our hashtags, though. Oh, yeah. We're not using Remembrance Sunday ones because no, we're not no. cunts. No, that's well, well. Well, all people are cunts, but we're not the Sun and the Mail online. Yeah, true. Uh, the pictures of him. This was on Sky News. Now, I'm not saying it as if Sky News is like a, the beacon of all. That's where I get most of my news from. Mm. Well, while we're at it, Kay Burley, um, if you ever want to unblock me on Twitter, you know, you, when you blocked me years ago. Who the fuck's Kay Burley? Kay Burley is this old witch that they bring out on Sky News. Uh, she likes to come in and just... You, Loyal, devoted listener, Kerber. <laughs> <you, yeah. laughs> sure. Usually when she uh, finds somebody, there's usually like a tragedy or something, she likes to go like... How I did wonder you... what terrible things they've done in their life. <laughs> there's a video. There's actually a video, there's videos of her being completely horrendous to people. There's, right. vid, there's a bit like when April... Do you remember April Jones was a girl... Uh, got murdered in Wales. Yes, and they were all looking for her and everything. They'd mm. found out while they were all searching. The whole um, village came out looking, and she was there because, of course, she was. They found out while people were looking that they, I think, they'd found evidence that she died, and uh, she went straight to people there and going, uh, mm. "Now we do, we do think she's dead. Uh, how do you feel about that?" So. <sighs> Yeah, it's that sort of scumbag. Yeah, that sort of scumbag. But on Sky News, going off topic, Sky News genuinely put our story of Boris Johnson making a cup of tea. and Oh, I did see that um, because he, he left the tea bag in and put the, put the milk in first yeah, before yeah. the water. Yeah. Now, I mean, to be fair, that is unforgivable. Yeah, he but... should, should have been executed for that. <laughs> but how is that newsworthy? Um, that just shows that you've got fuck all to even talk about, that you're talking about the Prime Minister making a fucking cup of tea. Yeah, it's... To me, this sort of thing, it highlights the need for a totally unbiased news source. The need for? Yeah, because clickbait article headlines are now where people get the, the news from. It's not the news article itself. Yeah. It's the one-sentence news thing. 
stuff like Jeremy Corbyn's a terrorist sympathiser and people believe it. Because it comes out. Because he once sat down and had a political meeting with an IRA person. That's the only reason the IRA stopped bombing people all the time, were through political channels. It wasn't a war that we won by fighter, but that's not the point. Um, it is very clear when you see different news outlets what side support. they're on because they're owned by multi-billionaires that have vested interests in the, their chosen politician the amount of having favour from them when they when they do get into if they get into power the amount of stuff that I've seen from like that's popped up because I don't read the Guardian uh, bits that have popped up from them it's always there's always a, a slant towards slagging off the conservative, conservatives and pushing Labour yeah you notice it when you start seeing these things and I, and I hate that I'm noticing those things it's well not- then Daily Mail hate Labour Love conservatives. I'm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not no. saying one of them. I'm just saying yeah. that the whole the whole thing. It, it's ridiculous. Nigel Farage, for, for one, right now, a lot of people. What this is? That's somebody who's been like immediately vilified because as, as if as if he's like. Now, but just bear with. I'm again. I'm not flying the flag. I'm just looking back. I'm just saying the hypocrisy of of the media. Yeah. You you watch Nigel Farage. And the moment you say that to anybody, they'll go, ah, oh, scumbag racist. Yeah, he's, he's racist. All right, explain. Yeah, he, he hates... Uh, the whole UKIP thing. Yeah, but no, but like you said before, that you can't, if you, you're going to be, you're going to have people in that party that are going to say stupid things. I mean, I'm not, yeah. he's not coming out and going, get rid of all the fucking coloured people in the world. He's not saying that, is he? That would make a good sound bite for anybody watching. Yeah. <laughs> I just won't leave it in. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just beep it out. <laughs> Um, he went on so he's been in the news because he's pulled 317 candidates yeah he's the sort of yeah he's totally because I think it's there's a few of them a few of the parties that people are like I'm not running I don't want to be no no it's not that he's done it apparently I mean we don't know the ins and outs but it's to kind of it's not to split the conservative vote so right. that it, so it turns out because it obviously if Labour Labour and the Lib Dems will have a second referendum Mm. And he's done a deal with. I think he's doing a deal with them. So he's right. basically said they're not going to contest seats in certain constituencies that may end up not right. letting the Conservatives yeah. win, kind of thing. But here we go again on to Piers fucking Morgan, right? He What's goes, that? Ten out of eleven episodes that you mentioned him now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's relevant. He Nigel Farage goes on there in the morning, and nobody. He, he gets this shit straight away, Nigel Farage. Yeah. Before they've even introduced him, sometimes I'll say stuff like, member for parliament of da-da-da, how, how's yeah. it going? Sometimes it's, here's massive racist <laughs> Nigel no, Farage. No, not for, Piers Morgan started it off before they'd even seen Nigel Farage on the screen. So Nigel Farage, he ter- uh, tried and failed seven times to become an MP. Nigel Farage, are you a surrender monkey? I thought, oh, for fuck's <laughs> sake. That's yeah. how it started. For a man that hates Piers Morgan, yeah, you watch a lot of Piers Morgan because it comes up constantly. Because clickbaity shit, all I have to see is his stupid inflated cunt face constantly, and it, and I get sucked in by all and these you stories. Buy it. And I buy it every time, yeah. Because pa- maybe I, maybe I kind of want to agree with things, but um, the only time you're ever going to see him bite back. Did you ever see uh, Piers Morgan does these life stories? It's, no, I don't watch Piers. Morgan. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. It's not a morning thing. It's a, it's like an evening thing, and it's the, they do life stories where they talk to. It's the only thing I've ever seen him in where he's not an arsehole, right? Right. But they just talk. They had like um, Michael Barrymore on there before and talking about all the shit they went through. They've had like celebrities on. They had Caitlyn Jenner, who we'll get to, and then he almost like kisses their ass the entire time, and they'll talk about the whole career. They had Nigel Farage on right, and then he started laying into him as if he was on like daytime TV, and he was saying all this stuff like like you. You, you had this person in your party and they said bongo bongo land and then he, and then he's going which was hilarious yeah of course it was hilarious send them back to bongo bongo, bongo land, land. <laughs> but then he, he turned around and just went yeah there were bad apples in the party that I ran before and he went yeah but basically he was goading him saying you you believe that don't you you believe it and he just wants that fucking soundbite to go yeah. you believe it and yeah, yeah 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 and he turned around it's the only time you'll ever hear him uh, Nigel Farage just went I've had years of this bullshit from people like you and I'm sick of it. And I thought, I wish you'd do that on daytime TV. Yeah. Just f- 
Tell him to just fuck shut him off. Down. Just fuck off. You don't. It, I don't. He started call, basically said to him, even though it's it's come out saying. Uh, this is why I'm doing this. This is why I've done this. I mean, he doesn't have to explain to anybody why he's doing it. But then he goes, uh, Nigel, um, cunt, goes, yeah, you're, you're, are you a surrender monkey then? Like, well, f- like, they're just trying to get fucking sound bites, aren't they? They're just trying to get him. That's all the thing does. Like I said, you're better off what, eating your cereal in silence with your hands. If I, I can't. That's why I don't have my cereal and watching Piers Morgan because my TV You're will be ruined. Too busy shouting, spitting cereal all over the room. At him. At him. I hope I meet him one day so I can actually spit at him. Friend of the show, Piers Morgan. Prick. Uh, you sent me a story about the Muck strike. Would you like to fill in? Yeah, this is um, some McDonald's staff are going on strike hmm. for. Um, well, there's four things that they want. Three of them, I totally agree with. So they want an end of youth rates. Yeah, uh, yep. Which I totally 100%. agree with that. Why a 17 year old should be being paid any less than a 25 year old for doing the same job fucking baffles me. Mm-hmm. Don't understand that. So yeah, guaranteed hours, no zero hour contracts. Yeah, zero hour contracts are the work of the devil. Bang, bang to rights. You shouldn't have that. Wrote us four weeks in advance. I don't get that at work. But personally, I think that should be a basic right. For for a company that just keeps rolling on, doing the same thing, it should be fairly easy to You'd think to so, that. yeah. Uh, and the fourth thing was a, a £15 minimum wage. Yeah. Right, so that works out for a burger flipper at £15 minimum wage, 36 hours a week. Do you know bearing, what that works out at? Bearing in mind that 8 21 is the minimum wage. Yeah. Do you know what that works out at, 36 hours a week? Go on. 28 grand. Right, a teacher... We have a four-year degree starts on 22. They've had to go to uni for four years. Not to Ronald McDonald's burger flipping school for 20 minutes. I've worked in a kitchen. Yeah. And I've also observed them because we can see everything that's going on behind there. Yeah. You go on a couple of courses, like you sit around and you learn about basic food hygiene it's really not difficult. No. I wouldn't expect to be paid £15 an hour. And no. That's not being me being like a sort of a... Oh, look at me, but... No, I'm, really? I'm not agreeing with poverty wage, which is what they're calling it, which 8.21 in London, you, you are going to struggle to make ends meet. Yeah. Maybe don't do a shit job in London. And I'm all for fair wages, but it's 30 grand in paid for a lot of management jobs. No. Like senior management jobs, a lot of places don't pay that. A high, a high end, I say high, like a mid-weight graphic designer is about 28, 30. Yeah, and that that some that just in my line of work, that is someone who's got a degree and has worked for several years in the industry. Production management for multi-million pound company. The people that make McDonald's burgers, the people that are in charge of making the burgers, top out at thirty grand. <laughs> what I thought, I not s- making them in shops, manufacturing thousands of burgers a day. I saw a store. There was a, a state a state a thing on here from bloke called Lewis Baker. Okay. Uh, from Crayford, uh, Crayford store. Now, I'm from Dartford. Crayford is next town along. They sound like terrible places. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, Crayford, right? He works in the Crayford McDonald's. You don't want to say the word Crayford again? Cray- I'm just shouting Crayford. Shout out Crayford um, Massive. So he's on the fourth strike. This is the thing that he said to the press. And I'll go out on the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, and the ninth, and I won't let them get away with it. It was like... Hang on a minute. Are you that much of a sad cunt that you're like you're willing to just or a lazy cunt? All yeah. you're doing is just striking because you're working at McDonald's. Go fucking work somewhere else or go to uni or maybe get or maybe learn something. Maybe not know. having a dig at anybody that works at McDonald's. No, but we're bearing in mind that the people somebody has to the people that are involved in this. It's not like a huge amount of people. No, it's not. Um, I think currently there's six stores doing it with plans to go nationwide. Uh, did you see how McDonald's responded with it? Uh, they basically just said, we're not closing shops. They was just, they, Small number of staff kicking up They basically fuss. just said, it's a tiny portion of our workforce. Yes, basically. Fuck you are off. totally expendable. Which, now I, <clears throat> I know staff are expendable. Hmm. And it's not the way society should be, really. It used to be 
you kept all the good staff. Now companies don't really have an interest in doing that. You Just work at McDonald's, more. everybody's on the same rate. It's not like you can go into the manager's office and go, I'm working harder than that cunt, I need a pay rise. Like it used to be. It's it's a shit state of affairs that a lot of people are in. Right? I interviewed for a job not so long ago um, where they said, and I quote, this is a direct quote from the guy, the manager, we don't pay a lot, so we need people that are enthusi- enthusiastic about what they do. Otherwise, the customer can see that they're not happy. Pay fucking staff a reasonable rate. And they'll naturally be happy. Minimum wage is not a target. It's no. not something to begrudge paying your staff minimum wage. It's set there to stop you absolutely scalping people. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, it's mental. I totally agree. What you're saying, I totally agree with the other points that we're raising. I've always thought there's a youth thing for doing yeah. the same job. Yeah. How, how, is that, how is that even a thing? But uh, and and another thing I saw was respect and dignity, dignity on the shop floor. Obviously, obviously. Do you know what I called someone out on it before when I was in McDonald's? I'm not sure if I'd had a couple of drinks, but you know when you you, you get a bit pissed and you end up in McDonald's. Oh yeah. I was at the tills, and then there was somebody young young girl that was working behind the tills, and I just I just came in and I was I was in that sort of like a a, a nice drunken mood. Lewis would probably be an antagonistic, shouting, bawling. I'm I'm very talkative. I'm loud. But I go. To, I said to this girl, you know, can I get this? Can I get this? And she's obviously new, and it's you know she's dealing with drunk people, so a bit stressful. And she's putting it in, and for whatever reason, she couldn't do it. And I wasn't turning around and going, "Fucking hurry up! What's the matter with you? You don't deserve fifteen pound an hour." Which I, working on a till, <laughs> you definitely don't deserve fifteen pound an hour. But she goes to she she whatever whatever reason she does it wrong, and then the manager's sort of hovering behind, and he comes over and he just absolutely talked down to her in front of me. And then, and then I just, I was, and then while he still stood there, I just sort of looked at her and went, do you, is he always a complete cunt or is it just today? And then he just sort of, you know, went, you know, yeah. stuck his you know, extra. Yeah. Straightened his badge with his extra star on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's... I get that. I totally get that. I've, I've walked out of a job before when my manager was an arsehole and was, was, was talking, talking down to me in front of people. It is demeaning. You think, kind of think, well, fuck this. Yeah. Do you not know get I mean? paid enough for this shit. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Although if they were paying £15 an hour at McDonald's, I'd be working at McDonald's. <laughs> Easiest job in the fucking world. Flip burger, pickle on, straight out. No fucking worries, pet. I've always wanted to have a go at one of the fries thing. The chip <laughs> the chip dispenser. Yeah, yeah, it's good, isn't it? Yeah, straight in the thing. Because it, it's, yeah. got, it's got the scoop and the side. Imagine getting paid £15 an hour to do that. I'd, I'd do that. Yeah. I'd, I'd go and work there in the evenings. McDonald's, if you're after two good members of staff... <laughs> Stuff and you're willing to pay us fifteen pounds. As long an as you hour. put me on the chips. Yeah, he wants chips. I'll happily be back with burgers. I had a McDonald's today, and it was. Uh, do you know what I got? Which I don't normally get. A quarter pounder with cheese, mm. and it was fucking lush. Shout out McDonald's. M- maybe they're paying them more in that one. Yeah. Shout out to the Berry McDonald's. Yeah. Um, McDonald's are scumbags as a company. Are they? I haven't yeah, probably so most big companies well, are always... paying the staff minimum wage they're pretty much scumbags yeah. um, but yeah ask for a fair wage £15 an hour ain't fair wage for that for that that job um, the chief exec of McDonald's do you know how much he earns go on 97 grand which for a company the size of McDonald's isn't a massive amount like they, these were these sort of strikes or whatever the muck strikes Started because their old chief exec was having some sort of illicit affair with a staff member, an unnamed staff member. Um, it wasn't Ronald, was it? <laughs> it could have been the Hamburglar. <laughs> um, and he was sort of ousted from the company. And they protested him because he got a good payout when he left. Right. So he got so many millions in, in stock. But he'd worked there for decades. Yeah, Do yeah. you know what I mean? And he's... The very top end, like that, the top top end of a massive billion pound company, and they're they're seeing him getting all this money and thinking, "Well, I work hard. I want fifteen quid an hour." Don't work like that. Unfortunately, if everybody got paid fifteen pound an hour, be like Nazi Germany, where the kids were playing with blocks of money in the street because it inflated that much. If we pay fifteen pound an hour, guess what happens? Your rent goes up. Everybody's rent goes up. Food goes up. People will be paying 15 quid for an Happy Meal. 
it, you can't just say, I deserve £15 an hour. It, it has to be gradual. If they up the minimum wage tomorrow to £15 an hour, petrol will go up to two quid a litre. Of course it would, yeah. It's not, it's not like they're, they're going to be then rolling in it. No, it's, it's you will be in exactly the same position, but you'll be whinging, oh, I used to only pay £1.20 for a loaf of bread. It's three fifty now. Mm. Nothing changes. You're still going to be poor. I did see that TGIs and Weatherspoons apparently were involved. They've had some sort of strike action in the past, but they weren't after the fifteen pound. They were just after the the basic, you know, youth rates, guaranteed hours, notice on the shifts. Be fair, like I that. can imagine it being way shitter to work in spoons than it is in McDonald's. You're surrounded by drunks. Yeah, I mean, at McDonald's, you're only surrounded by drunks at night. Exactly. When you can have a pint. With and your most breakfast. of the time in McDonald's, you can kind of hide behind the counter. Yeah. Whereas with, especially if you're absolutely hammered. <laughs> If, if with, with 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 spoons and now people can order to their table. Hey! Yeah, you I mean, have I, to I'm go. I'm saying to that them. I did that myself. Well, the last time we were in Manchester and we were bringing things to the table, and the same girl kept bringing it to our table, and every single time I kept going, hey! and it, after about ten times, she kind of went, and I just went, I'm not doing it now. Oh, like when we were at that other family gathering, and every time the last came round to collect the glasses, she went, cheers. 15 fucking times when she come round. Did I? Oh, in Ramsbottom? Yeah, yeah, potentially. I did do that. Maybe that's the thing I do then. I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And at the christening. I did it at the christening as well. Yes, hey, I did. Hey, every time they come to collect glasses, <laughs> the, the poor lass. <laughs> the poor lass didn't know where to look, bless her. But I bet she earned on £15 an hour. I felt like I brightened their day. Uh, you probably did the first time. Maybe even the second time. Maybe me brightening their day kind of okays the not earning £15 an hour. McDonald's, if you want to give me a shout. Yeah. I won't just be flipping chips. No, I'll tell you what. Sack two people. Take me out at £15 an hour. <laughs> you turn into the biggest fat cunt in the world if you worked in McDonald's. Oh, you know, yeah. They'd be having a dinner, <laughs> don't they? Jesus wept. Every single day. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what are you on for dinner today? The McDouble, double, double. I must say, when it, when I saw McStrike, I used to keep thinking, so what burger's that then? <laughs> it sounds good, that. It does. Sounds like, sounds nice. If I was McDonald's, actually, no, actually thinking about it, no. it wouldn't be a good idea, but working in marketing, you just wait for yeah. all this to settle down and then bring out a McStrike burger. Yeah. It's just got, it's just two buns <laughs> and then a 15 yeah. pound in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Cost you 28 quid to yeah. buy it. <laughs> You ready for my stroke dance again? Yeah. I'm a celebrity. Is back. Whoa. Yeah. Now, the only thing, the only positive thing, the only good thing, well, okay, two things about I'm a celebrity. One. Right. There's always a girl in a bikini in the shower. Right. There's always that. And it means Christmas is nearly here. Does it? Yeah. I thought that were X Factor. I don't know. I don't watch any of these bullshit programmes. Like, this isn't I'm a celebrity anymore. It's my mate or relative is a minor celebrity. Get me out of here. Well, I did write down all the people on there. Did I, you? Because I'd heard of two of one of them. I'd heard of Caitlyn Jenner. I knew more people on this one than I think. I mean, I don't watch it, but. Maybe we should watch it, then we can actually like review it every week. <laughs> I'd rather stick pins in my balls. Ian Wright. Do you know who Ian Wright is? Is he a footballer? He's a footballer. He used to play for West Ham for a brief stint. Uh, Nadine Cole of Girls Allowed fame. No, don't know. The, the, the main one that's not Cheryl Cole. No. The Irish one. And I guarantee you, odds on money, she will be the per- there will be a new story in the next couple of weeks. She'll be on. She'll be in some CD, Sun or Daily Mail because you're both cunts. Uh, news story where it says Nadine wows in bikini, stunning, stunning body in shower on I'm a celeb. Guarantee because it happens every year. Okay. Uh, Miles Stevenson, no, X Factor. I don't know who that is. Now, it used to be before. You can't. It's like you're generating. Uh, reality TV show people to go on a reality TV show to go on a reality TV show because that kind of like carries on a little bit further uh, Adele Roberts never heard of a ac- uh, actor she off a radio don't know I don't know um, Andrew Maxwell comedian never I have, heard of I have heard of him he's quite no, funny nothing to me uh, 
Jacqueline Josser, EastEnders, Dunno. couldn't give a toss. Roman Kemp, Capital Radio DJ. No, never heard of him. Uh, we've got James Haskell, rugby player. Never heard of him. Uh, Kate Garraway, who is uh, a piece of shit. Never heard of her. Uh, she's usually on the same panel as Piers Morgan. And she's basically just like that. And to top it all off, we have got Woman of the Year, Caitlyn Jenner. Yeah, I did see some memes about that. About how they're going to use uh, balls instead of kangaroo balls in the first Bush Tucker trial. Which yeah, that would be really good. Did amuse I, me. I, I wanted to keep them at home. Now, the Jenner slash Kardashian horde, hmm. they've got money at this point. I think what it is now is they're just attention addicts. No, she. she. All right, I'll say she. I'll say she because yeah. I'm politically correct. All right, Piers Morgan, calm down. That that person has always been attention, 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 attention. The whole family is. The whole family is, but like Joe Rogan, very, um, very, very well articulated. Caitlyn Jenner is a male Kardashian. Well, what well, you know, you know what I mean. When when he was Bruce, right? See, this is all fucking confusing. So basically, it's a bloke with no balls now. It's hard to explain. Also known as a woman. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm going to struggle. I'm going to struggle with this. I think we covered this a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we did. Are we spoken about Caitlyn Jenner before? No, but people can identify as whatever they want because it does not affect me in the slightest. Mm, I don't true. know who this person is. They have no effect on my life. I'm not interested. Did you know Caitlyn Jenner killed someone before? Um, I thought they helped OJ get off. I was thinking more about killing somebody on the road. Did it, did drunk driving thing? Uh, just not paying attention, looking at a phone and stuff. Drove mm. into the back of someone, pushed them into traffic and killed them. Got off we with forget, it. We forget about that and then we give them Woman of the Year. And they got off with Scott Free, I think, didn't they? Yep. She also said uh, Kanye would be a great bunk mate. I'd, I'd watch I'm a Celebrity if Kanye were in it. Because he's, he's insane. He's great. I think he would just sit there and just ramble horse shit <laughs> continuously to the point where people would just probably right, you see, try I murder him. I see Kanye. You know that old saying where they say if you put a thousand monkeys in a room with some typewriters, eventually you get Shakespeare or whatever that bollocks is. Yeah, yeah. Kanye's got all them monkeys in his head. And they just, he's just constantly spewing out all the shite that they're typing away. And then occasionally he drops a banger. That's that's what it is. He, he just puts that much shit out there, some of it sticks. So what you're saying is the majority of the, what he comes out with is shit? Yeah. Okay. I like his first three albums. This The new one that he released is fucking dreadful. It's gospel music. You listened to it yet? Have I fucked? You want to give it a try? Because uh, like he's gone music? from like two albums ago dropping songs called like "I Am God" and things things like that to now now this massively turnaround and it's all religious shit. That's not what we're talking about. We will talk about that at some point. <clears throat> How people still get entertainment out of this or X Factor, or Big Brother? It's been going for donkeys. Love years, Island, it? any of these? It's fucking mindless drivel. Mm. It's bollocks. Now I like watching people get thrown into a tank of sharks or whatever they fucking do for these trials as much as the next one. Like, that was what jackass were for. <laughs> you know what I mean? But oh, we moved we're on gonna, from that, We're going to we? dump Bam in this big fucking hole full of snakes. He's going to shit his pants and cry. That were great. We've moved on from that. I know. But not the people that watch this utter... But every single year, bollocks. like I said, with the whole bikini thing, because you guarantee that'll happen, there's always several people crying in that box. Oh, yeah, they have a crying box don't they next to the toilet I always think that that looks like uh, the, the room they go into whenever you see films where someone's kidnapped someone in the woods and there's like shit smeared on the walls and stuff like that <laughs> I always think that that is what that place looks that, that's, that's where they're trapped in there's shit smeared on the walls then maybe they're they crying. should be maybe they should just take all the cameras away and dump 10 nobodies in the jungle when Leave say, them for twelve months. I do. Just I do. Go and see what's left. When they say the jungle, I realise it's not in the middle of the fucking jungle. But you know when you go to like you go on a walk and there's a go ape 
yeah. and there's a clearing in the sort of wooded area. Yeah. That's basically what that is. Yeah. I mean, if we're really in Australia, because it's supposed to be in Australia, I think, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Like, are there often, like, because everything in Australia can kill you, mm. pretty much. Why hasn't anyone died yet? I don't know. It really is a shame that nobody's died yet. Um, it's usually a platform as also, well. Also, Australia, hmm. not really known for having jungle. I feel like nobody ever points this out. True. Like, if I were going to do I'm a celebrity and they're in a jungle... I'm going to go to Botswana. They'd be in Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> be in Brazil. They're not going to be in the fucking Australia, where it's just desert, mm. as far as it's, it's bush. It's funny, it's funny how there's always uh, like a hotel, a really good hotel, not far away as well. Yeah. They're back in the hotel by the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, they go up the tray along the bridge, and then they're in the hotel. It's, it's pretty crazy, much in that. like a sort yeah. of like a studio. Then, yeah, it's as amazing, if they're in that. sort of like Kew Gardens or yeah, the exactly Eden, the Eden Project. That's what I mean about about the it, go ape thing. It's just in the minute, but it's boring. It is the same thing I, that you see every year. It's yeah. not like something. It's like they've gone. Well, this format works. Let's keep doing it. Like, well, well, that is what it. they've done. Yeah, constantly. Yeah, There's same with the X Factor. Same with Big Brother. Same with Britain's Got Talent. I'll f- Love I'll, Island. If if Caitlyn Jenner wins this, it is going to be dreadful because all it's going to be was Caitlyn Jenner's so brave. For There's going. a question though. Go on. Would she be king or queen of the jungle? Queen, obviously. Oh yeah. They have testicles white. dangling from front of the crown. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Stop watching it, and they'll stop making it. That's the be all and end all. That's the it. issue. But it is TV for stupid people. Oh yeah, without a doubt. It's yeah. the th- it's the ones that people people it's that the... haven't bought Netflix and they're watching terrestrial. TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm not buying Sky. I don't want a subscription to Netflix or Amazon Prime. No, I've got four channels. That's enough. <laughs> and I, I love I'm a celebrity and X Factor and what. And I'm not paying my TV license either. Oh fuck! <laughs> Thanks for watching this week's episode of North and Mouth Podcast. Again, don't forget to subscribe. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.